I'm Joanne Larson. I work at Seagate in a design center. I have two drives here just to illustrate a couple of form factors that we design. This is an example of a two and a half inch drive, as we call it, uh, which would be used, for example, in a notebook computer. This is what we call a three and a half inch form factor. A hard disk drive is so named because the heart of the matter is where the data is stored, which is on these disks, and the data is stored magnetically as ones and zeros or as magnetic bits that are, that are oriented north or south. It is read or written, as we say, by very small transducers on heads. Um, so this little roughly triangular shaped feature um, can be thought of as the size of a bit. When we write, and this is the right pole, the flux is essentially focused through that pole. The corresponding area on the media below it is magnetized. The head is out flying on a suspension at the end of an arm. This is an arm, which is part of what we call the head stack assembly. The arms move back and forth across the stroke and read the various tracks that are laid out on the disc. These tracks are so narrow that we fit about 300,000 of them um, in an inch of radius. The arms, um, the HSA pivot, is actuated in this case, and I think this is kind of fun, magnetically. As we know, uh, electricity and magnetism exist together, and when a current is run through a wire, there is a corresponding orthogonal magnetic field. So how we are using that here is that, that there is a coil, which is, it's actually hidden under this magnet. Under this plate, there's a magnet. And below the magnet is a coil. The driving force of the current, or conversely, the magnetism, forces the, the back end of the, the coil to move in one direction or the other. Right here, we see the motor that, that spins the media. When the drive is powered off, the heads are resting on this ramp. The arm swings off so that the heads are preserved and they're not touching the media or anything. If I want to write or I want to read, in other words, if I want to record a picture or if I want to bring out a picture file, the arms swing out over the disc and the heads are flying over the tracks as we call them. So it goes to a very specific radius and the drive will be given an address to go. Let's pretend that was the, the radius, that was the track that contains the picture or part of the picture that is the file that we said, please show me this picture. The uh, data is recorded in magnetic domains um, that are very small surface area on the disk. The transducer on the head senses for that domain the direction of the magnetism and whether it is a one or a zero, and that's a bit. Uh, the head takes all of those bits and transmits that electrically up into the channel, it is reconstructed back into a data form that we recognize as an image. Uh, what we are looking at right now is the surface on the recording head that's facing the media surface. The, so the disc is spinning under the head and uh, there is an airflow or shear between this air bearing surface and the media surface. These darker areas are in relief outward and the um, medium range is actually inward. And these surfaces in relief are functioning in the way that we would think of wings or the features on a jet uh, that 
control the flow of air. Everything that we can see in this view is only to support what we call the transducer out at what is the trailing edge of the head and it's, it's where the magnetic flux is read and written or where we control the, the flux back and forth between the head and the disc. This is a very close view of the transducer and at the top it's not necessarily possible to see here but we'll show a picture in a minute is what we call the right pole. It's very tiny dot in, in the middle of a triangle at that location and that's where the pole that writes is visible. Down in the middle of this stripe is what we call the read element and that is the location where the magnetic signal uh, is sensed for the read function. So our magnification right now is 85,000 and our micron bar is 200 nanometers. When you think about it and you think about the size of molecules, we realize that some of these layers that we're looking at are roughly a few atoms or a few molecules thick. That is particularly true of the reed element and it's, um, it's just a tiny dot or sliver when we look at it even at 100,000 X and it has several layers which again are atoms thick at most. Very simple in concept uh, and an amazing amount of technology. <laughs>